This unit is about magnetism. We'll start by talking about the nature of magnetism, the history of it, when people first discovered what magnetism was. Then we'll launch into a discussion on magnetic fields, very similar to what we did with electricity with electric fields. The origin and direction of these magnetic fields will be presented, and then various kinds of forces. Uh, the magnetic field force on a moving electric charge, on a current carrying wire, the magnetic field due to a long straight wire, the magnetic field force between two current carrying wires. Finishing up with a practical application of electric and magnetic fields, the mass spectrometer. The nature of magnetism. Magnets were first discovered over 2,000 years ago by the Chinese and the Greeks and were used for various non-scientific purposes. The name was coined by the Greeks as certain magnetic rocks, otherwise known as magnetite, were found in the province of Magnesia, hence the name magnetite. Now, unlike electrical effects that we've studied, those came about when various objects, substances like amber, were rubbed with uh, silk, with fur, and electrical charges were separated between the two materials. Then you would get attractive and repulsive forces, and we talked about positive charges, negative charges. The difference with magnets is they come out of the ground already attracting and repelling certain materials. They don't have to be rubbed, they don't have to be manipulated. It wasn't until after 1000 AD, a thousand years later, that Chinese, European, and Persian mariners separately used magnets for navigation. They all noticed when a magnetic material, which was shaped in the form of a needle and floated on a surface of water, it would always point in the same direction, which is the north. Always being able to tell which direction was north was a critical factor in ushering in the age of exploration because now if you know north you also know south which is the opposite you know east and west and you can find your way to different places and you can find your way home we had to wait until 1600 when William Gilbert first explained what was going on with magnetism but first we'll talk about some of the properties of magnetism magnets have two ends otherwise known as poles called north and south so you can see, here's one magnet. We typically call these bar magnets. You have a north pole over here and a south pole over here. Very similar, and we'll just put the electric charge here. We talk about positive charges and negative charges. There's no correlation here between north and positive. I'm just putting that down as an example. If you put another bar magnet with its south pole here, these bar magnets will repel. So again, very similar to electric charges. If this were a negative charge and this were negative, they would repel. Two north poles facing each other, they repel. However, if you put a south pole next to a north pole, you can see the two bar magnets attracting each other. Once again, analogous to the electrical forces, yet this time we're talking about magnetic forces between poles. If you cut a magnet in half, what would you expect? You see we have a bar magnet here with the south and a north pole. You could logically expect that if you cut the magnet here, you'd wind up with one magnet that would be a north pole and the other magnet which would be a south pole. However, that does not happen. What happens is each individual piece will then, right where it's cut, instead of being a north pole here, you'll have a south pole. This piece here, you had the south pole here, you will now have a north pole. So each little magnet here now has both a north and a south pole. Okay, let's cut it again. What happens? Same thing. Each individual piece has a south and a north pole. This works all the way down to the atomic level. You cannot cut magnets and keep cutting them and hoping at some point you'll just get a north or a south pole. Whatever you have physically will still have both poles. Summarizing the similarities between magnetic poles and electric charges, we'll start with where they're alike. Magnetic poles come in two flavors, north and south. Electric charges come in positive and negative. Opposite poles, for example, north and south will attract each other. Similar poles, north and north will repel each other. And this is just like electric charges with positive and negative. Two significant differences though. Certain materials are naturally magnetic, where electrical properties result from some kind of physical rubbing, which will separate out the charges. 
And secondly, you can find a positive charge all by itself or a negative charge all by itself. We did a lot of that last couple chapters. You'd have a positive charge here. It would have some kind of attraction to a negative charge here, but they were separate entities. For example, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge. However, magnetic materials always, 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 no matter how small you get, contain a north and a south pole. You will never find a north pole by itself or a south pole by itself.